been two years since a monstrous tsunami crushed coastal towns in northeastern Japan, leading to the nuclear meltdown at the Fukushima Daiichi power plant. This is Jamie Williams reporting for the New York Times. Last spring, I visited towns near the Fukushima plant. One of the most compelling stories I heard was from a farmer and father of three named Hidehiko Ishimori. The Ishimoris lived far enough away from Fukushima Daiichi to avoid mandatory evacuation, but they were close enough to discover high levels of radiation in their food. So Mr. Ishimori quit farming and spent his life savings on a $50,000 device that detects radiation in everything from rice to milk. In November 2011, he started this center called Chisakihana, where people came and paid a small donation to have their food checked. I called Mr. Ishimori this month. It has been a year since we last talked, and two years since the tsunami. I wanted to get an update on the food situation in areas near Fukushima. Everyone in my family is doing well, but Tohoku farmers are really having a tough time. The food situation here is really strange. Everyone says they are not concerned about it, but actually, when they go to the supermarket and think about what to buy, they think, yeah, it's probably better not to get anything from around here. Then they go out of their way to buy food from far away. So farmers don't get their food checked. And even if they do, Japan's safety limit has been set to 100 becquerels at the moment. So they say, well, if my food shows 20, 30, 50 becquerels, that's safe enough. And they go ahead and sell it to vendors. But in fact, no one really knows what level is dangerous or safe. In the spring of 2012, specific foods and drinks like mushrooms, milk and tea were showing levels of radiation that exceeded the safe limit set by the government. One year later, he says the situation has shifted a bit. Interestingly, there's some foods that have shown an increase and some that have not. Take milk, for example. People discovered that cesium got into the grass the cows fed on, which then contaminated the milk. Now it's made from safe places, so it has dropped a lot, down to below 5 becquerels. But on the other hand, things like natto and tofu, made last year from beans harvested the year before, had no radiation. This year it's the opposite. Cesium is now showing up. Consumer demand to test food is still high. Mr. Ishimori's detection center is just one of hundreds that have been set up either by the government or by individuals. Over the last year, Mr. Ishimori alone has collected $50,000 from donations and detection fees. Just recently, he invested $30,000 to buy three more radiation detection devices. My next step is to start detection centers in the places that have been destroyed by the tsunami and have nothing left. They're in a region that does a lot of fishing and farming. People say they want to grow vegetables and sell their food, but in fact, no one's buying. So my goal is to help them check for radiation so they can start selling again. I can't wait for a time when Shisakihana is no longer needed. But it's been nearly 30 years since Chernobyl, and we all know that radiation is still being discovered there in things like mushrooms. So even though I question how much longer I'll have to do this for, I know that contamination here will still be around for 25 to 30 years from now.